Hi all, um, I wanted to take a minute to go ahead and shoot my third vlog, um, mind the noise, I apologize, I'm up on the roof of my um, domicile, it is 8.50am and on the 22nd it is Tuesday, Wednesday, sorry, the day's all kind of blur now. Um, Yesterday, I went out to Kyoto after waiting for a break in the rain because it pretty much rained like non-stop until about 2 p.m. And, you know, stupid me, I forgot to either purchase or bring an umbrella. Uh, just assuming that it would be a rosy, you know, 45, 50 degrees all the time and sunny, you no know, overcast or whatever. Um, so that's my own fault. Um, but here I am, I got up probably about 6.50, um, getting ready to brave the cold and the uh, wind, which is probably messing with my sound at this point. Um, but yeah, I went out to Kyoto yesterday, I saw my first film in the Japanese theater. Uh, I went with an anime just because I figured if I didn't totally understand everything that was going on as far as like language is concerned, um, I would at least you know, be able to look at something really pretty. And uh, to be totally honest, like, m for coming from a film studies background, my, my, you know, way of looking at it is, if a film is well made, if a story is meant to be told, then I think that regardless of language, you're going to be able to understand it. And I have to say, this film, um, if I recall, it's, uh, Hirune Hime, which was basically like Hirune Princess, um, but it basically translated, it was like Absian and the Magical Lamp, which actually has nothing to do with a lamp. It has very much to do with a tablet, um, but it also has this kind of idea of like um, this inner narrative of the film within a narrative, so it's this girl that kind of talks about this story in, the, in a fantastical way and it basically revolves around this this young girl um, probably like high school age and uh, her father and her father I guess kind of gets wrapped up in these shady dealings and, and their mother and wife um, the mother of the girl like passes away some shady way um, but there's information on this tablet that the father hides and, but within that, the narrative is like, she's this little girl that's trapped and she has a stuffed little bear or dog. Um, I think it's a little stuffed Shiba that like comes to life and then she's able to kind of like build this robot motorcycle thing and like the city is under attack. It's kind of cool. Like it, it's kind of like frenetic. So it's like running around a lot. Like it's, there's a lot of action and it's always like moving, which is really cool. But basically at the heart of the story, it's like her telling this story in a fantastic way about the story of a father and her and his daughter trying to, to kind of stay out of trouble. Uh, so, and I think it, you know, was one of those things, like I said, that it got the message across regardless of how much I did or did not know the language. That and Signal uh, Studios did the animation. I mean, it, it was amazing looking. It really was well done. Um, it had kind of a very, like, Ava feel to it in the very beginning because there's, like, these big mecha and monsters uh, within, like, that kind of, like, storytelling type narrative. Um, but, yeah, like, it, it's got motorcycles and it's always moving. And it's and it's based in, you know, real locales. So there, you see Yokohama, you see uh, Osaka, you see um, Tokyo. So, like, there are these places that, like, it's based in reality, but then there's this fantastic element to it. So... If you can find it, I will totally, um, in the in the description, I will totally uh, find the Japanese and English translated names. Uh, that way you guys can check it out on, you know, whatever streaming site or purchase a real copy if you so wish. Uh, I did find it interesting that, like, like in America, the Japanese theaters have, like, a no piracy policy. Um, of course, I think they're a little bit more comedic with their... Um, their approach to getting people to stop like ours is it's just like a shady guy with a camera and a trench coat in Japan it's this you know uh, anthropomorphized uh, camera headed almost 
like a like a Power Ranger villain, and he's recording uh, the video. But then, you know, the the cops show up and arrest him, and then the and then that same character is like downloading things, and then apparently, like they will kick in your door to arrest me for pirating things in Japan too. So, you know, uh, you know, warning to the wise, apparently if you're in Japan, don't pirate shit. Because they will uh, 4chan party van you in a heartbeat. Um, so that was my that was my happenings yesterday. I took in Kyoto a little bit. It was cool to be back. Uh, I've come to understand, like, Osaka's cool, and I thought I would fit in a little bit more, you know, with the with the music scene that Osaka has and like having my tattoos and um kind of kind of like my general look I guess but the more I go the less I feel I fit in and that's not to say there's this sense of again like that sense of americanness over japaneseness I mean I I don't really quite pay too much attention to it truth be told um Although I did find it funny, I was in Osaka at the uh, Rukua, I think is what it's called, or Rukua, Rukura, which is like a, a big mall. Um, it's like a 14, 15 story like, mall shopping center thing attached to Osaka Station. And I was in there buying groceries and stuff because I thought I was going to go to Nara yesterday with um, two of my friends. And... I was buying provisions for the Shinkansen trip, and I it was hot. I mean, there's a ton of people in there. It's jam-packed, and so I took off my jacket, and I, you know, I've been wearing short sleeves underneath because I've been layering, you know, and um, so like when I take when I can, I take the chance to like air out my my, my chest and arms because it's hot, you know, and I sweat. Um, then you're just like crammed with so many people like japan is just so condensed and busy so you can't really help it um but yeah so i had taken off my jacket and again it's one of those things like i'm i'm cognizant of having tattoos but i don't like stare at them all the time so i just kind of forget i have tattoos most of the time um but that was the first time like really people kind of like looked at them and I think it was because of my my Adam my uh, Astro Boy for those that are uninformed to the Japanese name um, like people were really surprised uh, I think by you know Adam wearing uh, a Skabon outfit uh, like a girl gang outfit um, so I did have uh, a couple kind of like funny looks, but you know, nobody said anything. I think people are just like really surprised that, you know, here's this non-native Japanese that not only has tattoos, but it's like an Adam tattoo. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny. Um, but yeah, nobody was rude. Nobody said anything. Nobody like moved out of my way or, uh, I think I was like, it was more intriguing to people, honestly, because they just didn't know what to make of it. Um, but yeah, so like the more I go to, to Osaka, the, the less I think I fit in. But then I went to Kyoto and like, it's like going to a place I've been a million times, you know, back back in the States. I, I just know it so well. Um, and I've spent, you know, not a whole lot of time there. I mean, you know, maybe a, a two weeks tops in, in the three travels that I've had so far. Um, but it just, there is this comfortability to it that just, it, that, you know, Kyoto keeps kind of calling me. And so I think for, for the indefinite future, like everything I look for, it's, it's got to be based in Kyoto. Like even though Tokyo has more options, Kyoto just, it feels like the, the place I need to be. It's, it's not as busy, but it's busy enough. It's got things to do. It's got a main station. Um, yeah, I mean, I have a, you know, uh, a past with it. There's a lot of places that are really important to me. So it was good to, I mean, it's good to, to kind of get out of my comfort zone though and explore Osaka, go to Tokyo, go to all these different places and see what feels nice because, you know, if I'm going to be here for the rest of my life, I, I need to know where, where to kind of like plant my flag, I guess. So, um, there's some crows kind of flying. Um, my, Yep, flying overhead too. Um, so yeah, uh, so that was yesterday. 
Um, I'm gonna go to Osaka today to hang with somebody that I actually met on the plane of all places. Uh, there was a person that was seated next to me. It was, this was her second trip to Japan. And, you know, I just kind of threw out like, hey, if you want to hang out, like, we can go hang out together. Um, so I think that's the plan, which is pretty awesome. I, I continue to make new bonds through all my trips to Japan, which I think is fantastic. Um, and then hopefully I can actually meet up with uh, a Japanese friend for, that I met through Instagram of all places. Um, she owns a clothing business and she does like modeling and so she's like an alternative model. So she has like tattoos and stuff like that. And we bonded because she really likes Alkaline Trio. And I love Alkaline Trio, it's one of my favorite bands. So she has an Alkaline Trio tattoo and uh, owns a, a brand online. Uh, Lazy Lady brand, if you guys are interested in supporting her, she does ship worldwide. Um, Lazy Lady brand, um, dot co dot JP for those interested. A lot of them actually are themed uh, after lyrics of uh, Alkaline Trio songs, which I think are awesome. So, hopefully I can meet up with her at some point too, that would be pretty cool. Uh, it is chilly, I, I apologize for the shaking. I severely underestimated uh, the long sleeves to uh, cold ratio that it would uh, allow it. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what else. And then Monday, I... What did I do Monday? I don't recall anymore. <laughs> I have to look back in. Uh, oh, Monday. So Monday I went to Hiroshima. Sorry. And I think that was my second blog. I, yeah, I apologize. Um, days tend to blur uh, very quickly because I'm just on the go, on the go, on the go. I don't honestly know how native Japanese don't lose track of time, honestly. I think that's why everybody has planners. Like, I have a tiny planner, but I should probably utilize a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, um, so with the with the film stuff, I think that was really awesome because it kind of put me back into, like, critical theory mode. It allowed me to kind of stretch my, my mental muscles after having them, like, um, I wouldn't say atrophied, but... It, like, it's visual overload and my critical thinking cap doesn't really come on like on the train too much it tends to be through the media I consume so I kind of look at the media and the way that the the Japanese media is constructed and see like how people consume it uh, which I it, it's difficult because you don't want to stare and see but like most of the time people their faces are stuck in a phone which Truth be told, it's it's kind of like that in America too, which is saddening. Um, there is this feeling, this kind of lack of uh, connection, like this human connection that I feel here, uh, and it's a little saddening. But I also think that it's just because the the pace of life here is just so busy, it's so constant, and everything's always moving. That the Real connections come via like the mediated screen, uh, like the Facebooks, the, the lines, the 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 Instagrams, the Twitters, those kinds of things. Like Twitter and Line tend to be the, the big things here. Facebook a lot less. Instagram gets used, I think, but it's probably by like a very specific demographic. I'd actually be really interested in knowing. Uh, who the target demographic is in Japan for Instagram. But, I mean, I follow a, a good deal of Japanese Instagrammers, so it's not that they don't use it. Uh, I think it's just the the culture itself also is, is a little private, so you tend to get less selfies or, or photos of others. It tends to be like things of places... Um, or, or abstracts, which I think is kind of cool, you know. Um, I, I was actually very, very flattered. Um, a friend of mine, uh, who I know through another friend of mine, um, she told me that she believed I was a photographer. Now, I've never believed that. I mean, I've taken photos, I've shot films. 
I, never once have I truly ever believed in, in the fact that like I am an artist in, in any way, shape, or form. In the last couple of years, maybe I've started to sort of believe that, but even then, I would never, I would never call myself an artist, knowing tons of artist friends who are way far more talented than I am. Um, but you know, I also truly believe that art is subjective, so that you know, people that have have watched my films, uh, people that have uh, ha helped in in my in the creation of these projects. I mean, even my music. I mean, I guess that was that was art. You know, I I, I do miss playing music, and I was in bands for a long time, so that was, yeah, that was art, okay. Um, but I've never truly considered myself, like, a, an artist in, in the traditional sense. I, I don't paint, I don't draw, I don't, um, you know, I don't sculpt or anything like that. Like, it's always tend to be, like, some other type of um, consumed media, music, film, pictures, but even then, I'd never consider myself a photographer or a filmmaker or, or any of those. You know, I just, they were things I did, not hobbies, they were, you know, projects, like passion projects, they were things I did that I, I put my heart and soul into, and they just so happened to be called art in, in like, the larger realm of what art encompasses. But... I took a photo at uh, Hiroshima on Monday, which, you know, some of you may have or may not have seen, and uh, a lot of people, uh, some people commented on it, a lot of people seem to, to really like it or have some reaction to it, which, you know, if, if you did, awesome. I'm, I'm truly moved. I'm very appreciative. Uh, that photo was taken on a whim. Uh, I, I added a filter, so yeah, okay, I got a little, you know, Instagram artsy, but the, the, the picture came out far better than I had originally thought it would, I, especially considering it was kind of like a canted angle, and I didn't think it would look that great, and I felt too posed, um, but the reaction I got, especially from, from my friend Day, she was like you're a photographer you just don't know it and so that really from the bottom of my heart I'm, I'm truly flattered that somebody thinks that I'm that talented to to make a photo that you know people can connect with have, have there's some affective um you know mimetic quality to it somebody sees it and they can feel something that you know that's all I can really aim for and that's all I really want is to put an image that makes people feel like they're there with me, that they can feel something, that they can sense something. Um, the same thing with my films. I want people to watch these projects and and uh, feel something and, and have a reaction bodily, emotionally, mentally, so that they can be that mimetic quality, that exchange, so that dialogue happens, discussion happens, exchange of, of ideas and and uh, emotions and feelings and energies happen so to, to everybody who thinks I'm an artist I'm truly flattered thank you so much um, maybe, maybe it's just one of those hats I have to start putting on and, and um, you know utilizing a, a little bit more I guess but yeah I mean I think those are, that's just like the big point is like the the art the, the way I, I utilize my media, the way I utilize the knowledge that I've gained from, from the, the fantastic mentors that I had uh, at USF and, uh, over the past three years. Y your, uh, your teachings were not totally wasted on me, I promise. Uh, I'm keeping the, the, I'm fighting the good fight for film studies and, and, and new media theory far, far away. Uh, across the globe so um, you know again thank you everybody to who watch these uh, I'm really over the moon that so many people are really enjoying them and, and having a good time watching them I will certainly try with this next one to have a little bit more of a format I'm working on it it is a work in process uh, these are living things you know this is organic it, it has a life of its own, and so I just kind of let it move me the way I want. 
but I also kind of want to wrangle it in so it's not so much more rambling. But yeah, so thank you for checking it out. Thank you for the subscribes. Thank you for the comments, everybody. And uh, I will see you on the next one.